Are you interested in trying to increase your speed, improve your vertical jump, become a little bit more explosive? If you're sick and tired of feeling sluggish, a little bit weak and a little bit slow, then learn from this video on how you can apply our training methods to get a little bit more explosive. What's up everybody, I'm Dane from Garage Strength and we're gonna cover the topic of peripheral sensory receptors. So what does that mean? We're gonna go over two things specifically. Okay, so we wanna cover muscle spindles and my favorite word, the Golgi tendon organ. So right off the bat, these are confusing words. They're, they're big, they're maybe a little bit big for my own purchase. <laughs> but we have to understand what these do specifically from a physiological perspective so that we can have a better understanding about strength training and about resistance training and about shock training, plyometric work, power metric work, whatever it is that you might wanna be doing from a ballistic perspective. We've got to understand muscle spindles and we've gotta understand the Golgi tendon organ. So if we're gonna go and build, you know, if we, if we think about this, being a muscle, right? Okay, here. And we've got all the myofibrils here. And we got a little bit of space in the middle. We got myofibrils here. Okay, and then in through the middle. Let's go like this. Okay, what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have uh, extra fusel fibers here. Okay, and then intrafusal here as part of the muscle. Okay, so inside the muscle itself, we are going to have, this, these are my fibrils here on the outside. This is the intrafusal part of the muscle belly. And, and on the, uh, throughout the extrafusal part of the muscle, that is where 90 to 95% of our actin and our myosin is. And this is where all of our contraction is going to be coming from. Now on the intrafusal part of the muscle, there's gonna be about 10% of the actin and myosin will be here on the ends, but what the intrafusal part is doing for us is it is creating a better knowledge and a better awareness of proprioception. It's teaching us about where we are in space. Okay, where? what am I doing right now with my eyes closed? I know that my hands are out here. I know that the whiteboard's right here. And that is because of what's happening inside of my muscle belly. So if we can think about muscle spindles, okay? The way muscle spindles work, the muscle spindles are living, they're existing in the intrafusal part of the muscle, okay? And, and what ends up happening is if we can envision me doing a, a bicep curl or doing a drop curl, okay? So when I do a drop curl, my Golgi tendon organ, which we'll go over later, is going to be responsible for relaxing my muscle and that's gonna carry me through that uh, eccentric portion. And then when I catch the weight in that drop curl, when I catch it, what ends up happening is the, the muscle spindles will have an afferent signal. So it'll signal over here. Okay, so it'll be afferent. And I'll tell you how I remember this in a short period. And this afferent signal will travel to the spinal cord, okay? where we are gonna have interneurons. Okay, so when, when it travels to the, to the spinal cord, what ends up happening now is, is the, so if we go back to the beginning, the, the muscle spindle will send this afferent signal to the spinal cord. It'll get to this juncture at the interneurons. The interneurons will then send a signal back and this is efferent signal, okay? I'll send an, an efferent signal back. Let's draw this up here. To the muscle belly to recruit and to fire high threshold motor units because I'm doing a rapid drop curl, okay? And that's gonna be through alpha motor neurons and that's gonna fire and it's going to recruit my biceps to explode back up to the top because it's the muscle spindles are uh, recognizing the amount of force needed to catch that barbell at the bottom and explode back up to the top. And so 
That muscle spindle is absolutely key behind understanding how much load you are gonna be feeling and how what the velocity of that movement is going to be. So think about when you're going to the doctor and the doctor hits you on the knee with the, with the hammer and your knee jolts forward, what ends up happening is the, the muscle spindle sends that afferent signal to the spinal cord after the knee has been hit by that hammer. And then at the interneuron juncture, the efferent signal comes back and it tells the muscle fiber how much it needs to recruit and at what speed it needs to recruit. So now if we can get into the, the Golgi tendon organ, the Golgi tendon organ will exist in a collagen uh, matrix essentially just outside the muscle fibers. There's, there's gonna be a little bit of muscle fiber inside the Golgi tendon organ, but it's going to exist over here. Okay, so a little bit outside. And the GTO can only, it only utilizes an afferent signal. And the way I remember this is afferent sends to the uh, spinal cord, efferent comes back, A comes before E. That's one of my dumb tricks to memorizing this stuff. But the GTO exists here, okay? The way the GTO measures force or ob observes uh, force is the, the collagen actually pinches the, the, the GTO to send this signal to the spinal cord to recognize that it might need to relax. And, and the whole goal with both of these uh, sensory receptors, the, the muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organ is to prevent tearing of the muscle. So we need to understand that the spindles and the GTO are defense mechanisms to protect us from blowing out a pec or from blowing out a bicep or, or blowing out our quad, anything along those lines. And what ends up happening is that from a strength perspective, the GTO can have a limiting factor. It can have a limiting impact on our strength development, just as muscle spindles can as well, because the GTO is going to, to teach your body that something is heavy. So if I pick up a dumbbell, that recognition of that force, that, that load is from the GTO. It's telling my body like, this is really, really heavy. And if it's too heavy, it will relax the muscle and you won't be able to pick it up. It's the same thing as if, if you went to go try to deadlift a car and you didn't have rage in, in uh, a flood of adrenaline that could override the GTO, you would try to do it for about a split second and you would shut down, you can't, you can't lift it up, your body would stop firing. And so those are the two defense mechanisms, the muscle spindles which exist in the intrafusal part of your muscle belly and the, and the GTO which exists in the uh, outside in the, the matrix between the, so if the muscle belly is here, the tendon would be existing here and the bone would be existing here. It's sort of like the, the tendon muscle uh, matrix where the GTO ends up existing. And what, what does this mean, right? What does this even have anything to do with? If we can understand muscle spindles and we can understand the GTO, we can understand how to improve their ability to lower their inhibition. We can understand that if we start to use things like plyometrics, we start to use things like heavy partial lifts, slow eccentrics, double bounces uh, in a full range of motion. And we start to use these all as specific tools. Well, now we're, we're engaging with the muscle spindles and we're, we're leading to hypertrophy of the tendons, which then will help the GTO recognize that your body has adapted well and it can handle much more load. So now as we start to, to lift a little bit heavier, we start to use double bounces. The GTO recognizes that now the tendons are starting to grow, they're stronger, they're healthier. And now the tendons aren't at risk of destroying bone or tearing the, the bicep or quad, whatever that muscle belly might be. And if we can handle, if we can understand that from the perspective of plyometric training, uh, so a stretch shortening cycle. So because the muscle spindles recognize a long stretch, or, or contraction and the velocity behind it, it can then open up these neural pathways to fire a little bit quicker and, and override that size principle where instead of recruiting slower twitch than moderate twitch and then high twitch motor units, now because we've trained consistently with, with plyometrics and with shock training that now all of a sudden 
we start to understand that our, our neural pathways are a little bit more opened up and our body is better at recruiting high threshold motor units. And so what we ended up doing is like this is stuff that we've studied for quite a while. We started to comprehend how can we understand physiology and then start to manipulate things in our own training. And that's exactly what we did in the Vertical Jump Manifesto. We sat down, we wrote out a 12 week program specifically utilizing plyometrics, utilizing strength movements and utilizing different tempos and different exercises like the double bounce squats so that now our body can adapt to be able to put out as much force in as short amount of time as possible. And that's all done by manipulating the muscle spindles and by understanding how the Golgi tendon organ function. So if you want that, head over to GarageStrike.com. You can pick up the Vertical Jump Manifesto today. You can start to get a 41 inch vertical leap, just like Jacob Horse. You can be an absolute freak of nature, jump through the roof, get more vertical stiffness, run a little bit faster and understand how to put out power at a higher speed and a higher rate. If you like this content, head over to GarageShank.com, pick it up today. Please like, subscribe, share this video all over the internet. Peace.